Dr. Fusier told me many times that he suspected Eric was a psychopath very early, so his process was to attempt to disprove it, but the evidence kept reinforcing it. He said that Clincher was Eric's biggest whopper of a lie. His many versions of this feeling about the van break-in that got Eric and Dylan arrested on three felony counts. These four documents are scattered about thousands of pages of evidence released. I gathered them here for an easy comparison. The startling contrast reveals Eric's true feelings about the van break-in alongside the public persona he presented. They illustrate a hallmark of psychopathy, his great skill of faking empathy, and amusement at the ease of conning almost every adult standing in his way. This is one of the best examples of Eric's duper's delight. Eric Harris wrote an apology letter to his victim, Ricky Becker, who is the owner of the van. A convincing letter would make life more pleasant for Eric, seeing as he had to do this as part of his diversion program in order to pass it. So here's the letter. Dear Mr. Ricky Becker, Hello, my name is Eric Harris. On a Friday night in late January, my friend and I broke into your utility van and stole several items while it was parked at Deer Creek Canyon Road in Wadsworth. I am writing this letter partly because I have been ordered to from my diversion officer, but mostly because I strongly feel I owe you an apology and explanation. I believe that you felt a great deal of anger and disappointment when you learned of our act. Anger becomes someone you did not know was in your car and rummaging through your personal belongings. Disappointment because you thought your car would have been safe at the parking lot where it was, and it wasn't. If it was my car that was broken into, I would have felt extreme anger, frustration, and a sense of invasion. I would have felt uneasy driving in my car again knowing that someone else was in it without my permission. I am truly sorry for that. The reason why I chose to do such a stupid thing is that I did not think. I did not realize the consequences of such a crime, and I let the stupid side of me take over. Maybe I thought I wouldn't be caught, or that I could get away. I realized very soon afterwards what I have done and how utterly stupid it was. At home, my parents and everyone else that knew me was shocked that I did something like that. My parents lost almost all their trust in me, and I was grounded for two months. Besides that, I have lost many of my privileges and freedom that I enjoyed before this happened. I am now enrolled in this diversion program for one full year. I have 45 hours of community service to complete and several courses and classes to attend over the course of my enrollment. Once again, I would like to say that I am truly sorry for what I have done and for any inconvenience I may have caused you, your family, or your company. Respectfully, Eric Harris. That was the letter that he wrote to Ricky, who was the uh, owner of the van that he broke into with Dylan. And now Eric's rat about it at the same time in his journal, but it's completely different. The letter that he wrote to Ricky was, you know, apologetic. Um, he saw himself, you know, acting in a stupid fashion, which led him to get arrested by officers and have to do this whole diversion therapy to avoid, you know, any criminal charges on his record. But now that he's, you know, in his own personal bubble here, writing about it in retrospect, it's a completely different story. I'll read some of it for you. Isn't America supposed to be the land of the free? How come if I'm free, I can't deprive a stupid fucking dumb shit from his possessions? If he leaves them sitting in the front seat of his fucking van out in plain sight in the middle of fucking nowhere on a fry fucking day night. Natural selection. Fucker should be shot. Now we can see here that obviously he feels a lot of anger towards what happened. Not only because he thinks it's unfair that he has to go through this program because of his actions, his negative actions. But he doesn't see it as like a problem, you know. Him stealing from the van, he thought, was just an opportune, you know, this opportunity that he got in front of him and he just took advantage of it, because that's what you're supposed to do. That's, that's what he thought. So, you know, there's a great disconnect between his character here. He, he puts on this facade, you know, for the public, and then behind the scenes he's kind of scheming, you know, and just um, kind of re-emphasizing the fact that he's in the right. And that people are wrong, but he has to play along in order to kind of go about his own business. So I think that's quite interesting. Thanks so much for listening. Um, I'll probably be doing more of these readings, actually, because I do find that 
you know, delving through these, that there's a lot of uh, things that we can kind of piece together to kind of see the um, the mindset of both Eric and Dylan. So I think it would be a good venture to kind of go about reading some more. I don't know how other people are going to feel about this. Mainly my channel is dedicated to like music videos and gaming, but I'm kind of like diverging into a, a whole different path here with doing these readings, but maybe it's a good change. I don't know. Maybe, maybe change is good. Thanks again for listening guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye